we can use SQL Server Management Studio to take a quick look at each of these databases. First we have the AdventureWorks 2008 database and like the other database AdventureWorks 2, GW 2008 we need to install these databases by first downloading them from the CodePlex website. They do not install as part of our SQL Server 2008 installation. So this is a, a change from uh, earlier versions of SQL Server. So you have to get these databases separately. And in fact, for this particular course, we've also added some uh, scripts that we have applied to modify some of the contents of these databases to achieve some of our purposes. But in general, the databases will contain um, similar tables that you can download. Um, we have the various schemas that are established and they just organize our tables into logical groupings that you can also establish different privile privileges for as you define your security model in your environment. A lot of our solution will be focused on analyzing sales by product, so we work with things like the product table and the categories and subcategories information, and we do track that in separate tables in the data warehouse. Um, we also will be working with the sales table where we have uh, two types of information. We have the sales order header and the sales order detail. So the sales order header would capture information such as the customer, who we sold it to, when it was sold, what the grand total was, whereas the sales order detail gives us the specific line items of which product sold, how many of that product sold, what was the cost of that product, and what, what did we sell it for. So those, that bit of information is very helpful, but we need to consolidate it in to um, different form so that we can better perform analysis for our uh, reporting and analysis solutions. But this is a typical OLTP system where we have a third normal form type of structure. And so we can see a lot of data here in the sales order header. For example, we have an order ID. We have various dates in here. We have some uh, foreign keys that relate back to um, customers and salesperson and territory, for example, shipping method. And so there's a lot of information in here that is useful for analysis, but there's also information in here that's not necessarily useful, such as the row goods or modified dates. So as we go through our analysis process, figuring out how to design a data warehouse, we need to understand what uh, pieces of this information are useful for our reporting and analysis requirements. One of the things that we'll find as we go through this course is that we need to distinguish between internet sales and reseller sales because there's different kinds of information associated with those. For example, in, a, in an internet sale, I have access to um, a customer, but I may not necessarily have a salesperson associated with that because the person would be buying directly over the internet. And so you can see that here, for example, we have a nullable um, column. Whereas with reseller sales, I would have a customer ID and I would also have a salesperson ID. A reseller in the context of our AdventureWorks database is another entity that's selling the AdventureWorks products. So it might be a store or um, distributor. So we'll be learning in the next module how do we translate our information requirements and our understanding of the OLTP structures into the data warehouse structure. So looking at the AdventureWorks DW 2008 environment, we have DIM tables, that stands for dimension, and we have fact tables. And the dimension tables are organizing the context for our analysis. So these are things that you can think of as items that I would put on rows or columns when I'm doing analysis. They're the people, place, and things that provide context to the numbers that we're analyzing, such as um, reseller sales amount. So notice here that we have one fact table for reseller sales and we have another fact table for internet sales. So we track it separately because there's different bits of information. As I noted in the uh, examination of our AdventureWorks database, the OLTP, when we have internet sales, 
we have things like customers, but we don't have salespersons involved. And so um, like we saw in the sales table, when we have a fact table, we will have foreign key relationships and we'll have a variety of other columns that organize information here. And the number of foreign key relationships that we have define the grain of this particular table. And we'll talk more about grain in our next module. But we can see that reseller sales has a different set of columns. Even though we're still dealing with sales, we can see here that I have an employee key, for example, to note who sold the product, whereas in my internet sales, I don't have an employee key represented there. So the grain is different because I want to track my sales by employee when I'm looking at reseller sales, but I don't have that information when I'm tracking internet sales. So we set up different fact tables with different grains of information, even though the subject matter might be the same as in the case of their internet sales and reseller sales. I can have other fact tables to track information such as finance. This would be our general ledger information or maybe uh, sales quota information to track um, our sales uh, quotas. In other words, our targets that we've established for individual employees for particular points in time. So in this case, we have year and quarter established as the grain of information for which we're tracking our targets for the individual salespeople, whereas our individual sales would be tracked at the daily level. By organizing information into dimensions and facts, we minimize the number of joins that are involved. So we'll have foreign key relationships from our fact tables out to our dimension tables, for example. But that's it. Generally, we don't have other um, relationships, foreign key relationships from dimensions to other tables, although there are some slight exceptions to that rule that we'll talk about in the next module. But we call it a star schema because we'll have a centralized fact table that then has a single join out to its dimension tables, and that provides a much more optimized structure than what we have in our OLTP systems. So we'll see in module two how that works.